We're looking at another Geekom. I've really been liking what they've been putting out. So we're looking at the Mini IT12. This is based on the Intel stuff. You can get them with an i5-12450H, or you can get it with an i7, which is what this one has, the i7-12650H. And they also have the Intel XE graphics on the inside, it just says UHD graphics in the thing. You got Wi-Fi 6, you got Bluetooth 5.2, and then you can configure them in three different ways. This is how we have this one configured with the i7, the 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. Just as I finished recording, they sent over a third $30 coupon code and then there's also a coupon code for the UK so look in the description the coupon code is good on Geekom's official website or if you're a Philistine you can grab it on Amazon and still use a different coupon code to get $30 off all that info is in the description now this i7 is a lot of fun because it's got 10 cores 16 threads the i5 has 8 cores and 12 threads now some of those cores are the efficiency cores so they'll just be the smaller cores that don't get as hot don't run as fast and they take care of a lot of your background stuff and they also keep the power draw of the system nice and low. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not going to be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. But look at this price, $22.92. No, no, no. We got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25. Hit apply and that price comes down to $17.19. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices for Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home, Windows 11, you can buy it directly, Windows 11 Home, and we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on My Purchase Orders, just View Keys and Codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit Start, type Activate, click on Activation Settings, paste it in there, click on Next, and you will be activated. So head on over to whokeys.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. Uh, looking right at the front there, we have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and then a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Let me stop for a minute. Many PC manufacturers, I know it's like a standard form factor thing to have the headphone jack in the front. Put it in the back. I'll, I'll give you $5. Plug in your headphones to the back. Minor gripe, moving on. Let's take a look at the back. First thing you're gonna notice, we got a couple USB-C. There's a little number 40 there. That is a USB 4 port, and each one of those can handle 8K at 60 hertz. You can run multiple monitors at the same time because below that we've got HDMI 2.0 and you've got two of those. Speaking of gigabits, how about 2.5 gigabit NICs? Well, just one NIC, but you got it right there. And then we also have USB 3.2 Gen 2 and a USB 2.0. That's what I would use if I wanted to plug up a hub and plug up a bunch of like controllers or something or maybe a mouse keyboard controller, whatever. Like I said, it's also got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. Now let's take a look at the inside, shall we? So we've got PCI Express Gen 4 by 4, and that's a 2280 that's already installed in there with the one terabyte. You can swap it out for whatever you like, but there's also an empty slot there, and that is the form factor 2242. M.2 right there. And then if you look, there's also a spot for SATA and that mounts on the inside of the case. So you just easily mount it right there. So all in all, you can have three hard drives in this tiny enclosure. Last but not least, this does come with Windows 11 Pro, not home, so that's nice. The 32 gigabytes of RAM on this, it's DDR4, which keeps the price low. Kind of like that. 3200 uh, is the speed on that. I want to mention that these are built tough. The outside of the frame is plastic, of course, but on the inside, we have an entire metal frame. I didn't take the whole thing apart, but you can see right here on their website how it looks. Got an entire metal frame on the inside. Talk about some benchmarks. So we started off with Unigen Valley benchmark, 43.3 FPS. That's uh, surprising to me. I didn't expect it to be that high. Now I know this is an older benchmark, but you know, this is also an Intel integrated graphics chip, but this 12th generation stuff does a pretty good job as you can clearly see here. Here's the settings. If you want to try to reproduce this at home, 1080p, High setting, DirectX 11. All right, let's talk about Geekbench 6. You can see the single core score right there, 2479, and then the multi-core, 9905. I'll scroll down for those of you who are really nerdy about this and want to see some of the details. You'll have to pause the screen, um, but I'll, I'll let it go all the way to the bottom just to make everybody happy. You can see what it's doing there with all of the different tests that it runs. And then I also ran the OpenCL test. You can get an idea of the horsepower from the integrated GPU. And again, I'll scroll down to the bottom here and try to talk so it's not just dead air. Yes, because that's what we like. And particle physics, woo, look how fast that is. So those are our two Geekbench benchmarks. And then finally, I also like to do Cinebench, and I ran Cinebench R23. Let's open up this screenshot from the test. You can see here it's actually above the i9-9800. 
80H, which is, you know, this is a couple generations after that. But, you know, this is, a, of course, a newer CPU, but it's nice to know that the newer i7s are a little faster. I mean, barely faster than the i9s of the previous generation, but also they're more efficient, use less power, and that sort of thing. And then up here on the top, you can see we have those ridiculous desktop CPUs that use way more power. This one is stacking up pretty nicely. God, look, look how much faster it is than, like, the old 7700K. Uh, but it's also not using much power at all. And then here's the rest of the information if you want to see that. Alright, we're trying out Mario Kart right now. Oh geez, I was doing well. I haven't built up the shader cache yet, but I'm running at um, running at 1x resolution and it's, uh, yeah, it's 60 FPS, basically pegged at 60 FPS most of the time. Alright, so yeah, this works really well. Now, not all the Yuzu games are going to work perfectly, especially in some of the newer ones that need to be tweaked or whatever. But, you know, as updates for Yuzu come out, you can expect more and more games to, to work. I've got to go charge my controller. I've got lots of controllers. <laughs> Just went and grabbed another one that was charging. And I'm uh, never going to make it because I didn't pause this. But whatever. You get the idea. This works great. So, yeah, you can play a lot of your, your Switch games on here. It also means that your Simu games especially are going to work. And then, of course, all your Dolphin games. So most emulators are going to work perfectly on this. We're talking PS2. Did you all know Flashback 2 was a thing? So yeah, I'm trying to play Flashback 2. Uh, I've got the, I've got it set to low and uh, sl slide is what? There we go. Um, I haven't played this yet, so I don't want to spoil too much for myself. It runs okay. It's not like amazing or anything, but uh, on low it's kind of playable. I guess I expected more than this. Well, let's check out East Shade. I've accidentally uh, messed up the USB by unplugging my mouse and plugging it back in, but see if I can fix that by messing around. All right, so we're running it at 1920 by 1080. Uh, let's put it up to medium. See if we can see if we can run it on medium. Game looks good even on low. Uh, medium's a bit. Uh, it's all right. Not too bad. I'm not taking that thing off the screen. I'm sorry. So East Shade, if you're curious about what this game is, it's kind of like um, Oblivion, except no combat and you're painting things and it's good for people who like furries because everyone's an animal i'm none of those things and i like violence so why am i playing it i don't know there's something very peaceful and serene and interesting about it so yeah if you like things that are peaceful and interesting and serene then you'll like this if you like to explore you'll like this if you like interesting architecture i think you'll like this and dialogue's pretty good too so yeah, East Shade runs pretty good on medium. We'll try high. I don't think it'll run on high. It's not, no, 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 this doesn't feel good. So play it on medium or low, but even on medium and low, this game looks really good, plays well. High, as you can see, is not a smooth uh, experience. Whoops, I always press that first. Why do I always do, okay, anyway. Well, I'm not doing so hot, but yeah, emulators work just fine. I mean, this is just Sega, so whatever. Have I considered not getting beat to death by the first enemies? No, I have not. How about a little DOS box, pure? Indeed. We'll run the dig. All right, so yeah, you can play all your old school games. I recommend, by the way, playing the dig in DOS box pure rather than scum VM because you're actually playing it on uh, emulated hardware. So you can play all your old games on this, no problem whatsoever. If you've never played Blackthorn, right now is the time to go fix that. PC version is probably my favorite, but the Super Nintendo version has really good music. I'm gonna get you with a back shot. The fan is not that loud, so it's obviously not taxing the CPU in an extreme amount. Let me just do a quick little test here. I've got it, I'm gonna hold it down there, pretty close to the unit, right at 44 with the room. There you go. So holding it, I'm gonna get closer to the unit and take another one. About two feet away from the unit while Valley is running, we're getting 45.9. I also have another computer running in this uh, room, so it's quieter than that. Now, what's weird is like, Valley is very quiet. However, let's open up something else. Now this is an old game, but for some reason, it just makes the fans go crazy. And so do a lot of the other games I tried out. It depends, it's like, here, here I'm gonna put the mic down there, listen. So when I'm just like in the menu of Blood Omen and I'm, it's getting more, it doesn't make any sense. The fans are ramped up. I can, they're very, very, and you can hear that they're chugging right now. 
So I would say that the fan sound on this is somewhat unpleasant depending on what you're doing. Like, you know, it says it's only 49 decibels, but I have kind of a higher pitched undertone or whatever. So it is what it is. The fans are a bit loud on this if you're doing certain things, but it doesn't make sense because other things that you would think would tax it, like Yuzu didn't make the fans go crazy, but Flashback 2 did. Blood Omen Legacy of Kane made the fans go crazy, but Valley did not. They were just, they, they didn't ramp up. So you have it, Geekom Mini IT12. It's Intel. So it does things that Intel does well, but it also does gaming pretty well. I think for the size and what it can do, it's pretty impressive. I do think that if you want to do just a pure gaming machine, the AMD systems oh, may be a little bit better, but the performance on Yuzu was really impressive on this, um, especially with Mario Kart running so well. But otherwise, I think in just general Windows gaming, the AMDs generally have a slight edge. I would look at one of the Geekom varieties that has the AMD. Say you just want to do a bunch of general stuff and you like having all those extra cores, uh, this one's going to be good for that because it's got those efficiency cores that don't take up a lot of power but really help make the system feel very snappy when you're doing office work editing or whatever um, because it can do it and it's powerful enough. So let me know what you think of this in the comments. Do you like the Geekom Mini IT12? Which one's your favorite Geekom? I've looked at a lot of these so far so let me know. And we also have the Geekom uh, the Air, I believe it's the Mini Air 12 coming up pretty soon. That's an Intel M100 base unit and the thing with those is their lower power, like really low power and lower price. Last thing I'll mention, you know, these things, I've only got a few boxes left and I'm kind of eager to clear up some space. Right now it's on sale, but we're gonna do half price. So 20 bucks will get you a keyboard that's water resistant, extremely quiet. It's got the poppiest keys that I've ever felt when it comes to membrane keys. I picked these myself, went over and found the poppiest ones. So yeah, I really like it. Plus. It's got a bunch of different colors. It's not full RGB, just got six or seven colors you can choose from and uh, you can turn it off if you like. But anyway, we'll do these 20 bucks. Just head on over here. The price will be updated by the time I make this video live. So enjoy. Thanks everybody. Epicpants.com.